right, guys. Um, in this episode of the Mad Medics Guide, we're going to go over procainamide. And it, a lot of people go, well, we don't carry that drug. Why do we need to know about it? Well, because usually uh, if you do carry this drug, there are good uses for it. And what happens when the conventional therapy fails? Okay. And so that's what we're going to talk about today and why this drug is actually quite useful in certain situations. And again, it's all about knowing that Vaughn Williams classification of, um, of your antidysrhythmics. Okay. So again, Pro, uh, Pronestal is the trade name of this, uh, again. And so, uh, it's an ester local anesthetic that's used to treat ventricular dysrhythmias and that is refractory to lidocaine. Okay. And that's the key part there. Uh, if, if you, if Amio and Lido didn't work, this drug is probably the one that's going to break it. And in certain situations, it might be the only drug that's going to break it, okay? It is in the class of sodium channel blockers, so that class 1, uh, just like lidocaine, except it works on a little bit different mechanism, okay? Um, it suppresses the ventricular ectopy. It slows the conduction through the bundle of his and the termination of reentry. So it doesn't allow it to refire, it basically is what's going on, which stops the ventricular tachycardia. Now... That being said, uh, well, Scott, why don't we just use this as a first-line drug? Because it's got a ton of side effects that we necessarily don't like, okay? And the other thing it does is it elevates the fibrillatory threshold. So it's harder for somebody to actually go into V-fib. And once they're in V-fib, it can help uh, allow you to get out of V-fib easier, okay? Now, that's not to say that there's some trade-offs to it, okay? Okay. Um, so you, it, uh, it, it slows your heart, it slows the conduction, and it slows the squeeze. And, you know, oh, Scott, why don't we use this for hypertension? Well, actually, you could probably. Uh, but again, it's a potent peripheral vasodilator as well, okay? So obviously, if you've got some problems, it's going to also kill your preload as well. Um, onset of the action is usually 10 to 30 minutes. In the emergency situation, 10 minutes is a lifetime and then the duration again is about three to six hours of where it actually if you turn it off well you got three hours to continue to worry about it all right so again we use it in pvcs that are refractory to lidocaine uh, and we use it in vtac with a pulse when there's re it's refractory to lidocaine or and again remember lidocaine is kind of our second drug so you i would say that this is actually probably drug number three as far as ventricular antidysrhythmics, okay? Um, Amio is probably a little bit safer to use because it's a potassium channel blocker with a little bit of sodium effects, all right? So again, it's going to slow down that shifting at the cell level. Um, the, it's used for supraventricular tachycardia or, or if you got an unknown origin. Uh, and it's the drug of choice, actually, when you have uh, associated wool Parkinson white. Now, let's stop and think about it. It actually slows the conduction through the bundle of his, and then it terminates a reentry tachycardia. So actually, for WPW, this is actually a pretty decent drug to use. Again, AFib and A-flutter with uncontrolled ventricular response. Again, procainamide is a good choice for those, okay? Now, we usually use cardizin for it, but again, what happens when the cardizin doesn't work? you got to have another tool in your toolbox to help that happen. Now, this is where, you know, well, Scott, this sounds like a pretty cool drug. Why aren't we using it? Well, check out all the cardiovascular effects, and that will answer your question. Uh, it causes QRS widening. It causes QT interval widening. It can actually send somebody straight into a systole if given too much, too quick, too fast. Uh, blows out of blood pressure, causes heart blocks. Uh, it can actually send the patient into torsades. So, uh, again, this is... Uh, again, it's not necessarily a safe drug. I wouldn't say safe, but it's done incorrectly. It's going to cause problems. All right. And again, you got to be able to identify when those things happen and then know to stop it. And I will tell you right now, uh, resolution of the dysrhythmia is one reason you stop using it. Another reason is that the, Q, the, uh, the QRS widens beyond 50% of what you originally started. The third thing is, is if hypotension develops. And the fourth is, is, of course, if you use too much, and we'll talk about that in just a second. Um, so, again, uh, matter of fact, everybody that I've ever had on it has, has always ended up 
puking before I got to the hospital. Okay, so it will definitely cause these. Uh, it can result in a fever. Uh, the biggest thing is, is look at all these things that you have that you can't give it for. Okay, so again, it, it, I can pretty much tell you if they've been in VTAC for that long, uh, lots of PVCs, you're probably going to be entering the realm of hypotension. And, and you just don't want to use this drug when somebody's blood pressure is really in the tank. Uh, if they got cardiac, hepatic, or renal insufficiency, renal failure, uh, if they have asthma, you want to stay away from this drug, okay? Uh, again, it, it can inc increase the plasma levels of amio and quinidine. Now, that's kind of a big one because amio we're probably going to give first, and so you're going to get really bad hypotension if you give an amio first and then you decide to get procainamide. So again, that's one of the reasons why the drug's not really in favor for emergency hospital use because of that synergistic effect that they have on each other, okay? And you could also get uh, neurologic toxicity if administered with lidocaine. So again, again, this is a third line drug. So you're already seeing that you're gonna get some really bad side effects, when, you, especially when you start adding this to the cocktail. If you're making a Long Island iced tea out of your, vent, uh, your ventricular dysrhythmics, you have a serious problem. Uh, again, it, you got to give it slow, 20 milligrams a minute. In an emergency, you can give up to 50 milligrams a minute. However, um, yeah, you're probably going to get all those lovely side effects we just talked about. Okay. Um, again, we usually put one gram in a 10 milliliter vial is how it's, it comes. It's usually pre-mixed when we get it two grams and 500. And so we started using a two gram and 500. We started at 20 milligrams per minute. Uh, again, and we do it until the arrhythmia is good or we develop hypotension. The QS widens by 50% of its original or we end up giving 17 milligrams per kilogram. And again, in the emergency setting, that's going to take a long time to do. So uh, one gram and 250 gives us four mics, four milligrams per milliliter. Run it in on a 60 drop set. Again, if we use our clock method for this, as far as administration, uh, let's see here, put the clock up here. Uh, again, if we're going to do the clock method, again, we got four mics up here. You usually start it at, uh, uh, again, 20 milligrams per minute. Uh, let's see, there's two milligrams a minute. Uh, that would be one milligram a minute. That would be three milligrams a minute. Uh, so that's per cc, right? So if you give uh, 60 drops, you're given four mics. You're given four mics at that point. Um, I'm sorry, four milligrams. I, I keep saying mil mics. Sorry, milligrams here, guys. My bad. So you're going to be given four milligrams. So essentially, you're probably going to start it at around the five drops a second to, to start your, your drug on this on a 60-drop set. Okay? Uh, so again, the way you start the drip here, you mix one gram into 50. You're going to uh, push that in. Uh, they'll give you a, a yield of four mics per milligram. Usually it's going to be five drops a second on a micro drip set. All right. So, again, usually if we're going to, and if we do get, by the way, a return of circulation, we usually maintain a maintenance drip. And then we run it at four to mic, one to four uh, mic milligrams per minute okay so that's where the clock method comes in for that but usually when you start it out usually start it at five drops a second until we get conversion once we get the conversion then we slow it down to usually i slow it down to two uh down to 30 drops a minute um for those of you challenged that would be one drop every two seconds there we go so that's the simple math on that one Folks, and when you do use this, this I can tell you that it's it's usually um, it, it's a very rarity, and and if you're going to have to break, probably it's probably a good idea to break a book out if you still have your book with you, because we just don't. You, I think I gave this a total of of uh, ten times in my career in thirty years, and actually five of those ten was in an emergency room. So. Um, uh, again, your pediatric dose, guys, I have never seen this used on a pediatric patient, so don't pound yourself about this one. Again, at 20, 22 to 6 milligrams per kilogram at 20 mics per minute to see any, any further. Again, uh, long and the short, guys, uh, yeah, don't worry about that. 
the pediatric dose and don't worry about that. Okay, uh, again, we're just not going to use it. There, again, I want you to know other things about it. Uh, it can be given IV or IO, and again, remember the pregnancy class. Again, uh, it's kind of, we're not really sure, so uh, use it with caution with your pregnancy patients. All right, that's going to do it. Again, procainamide, again, the times that I have used it, it's actually broken the VTAC, actually. So um, I'm going to tell you right now, it's an effective drug. Now, I spent probably the next hour uh, dealing with the side effects from it, but that's okay. At least we broke the VTAC by it. Um, and, and again, by nowadays, giving Amio first and then lidocaine, I would be cautious, very cautious about giving procainamide, especially in the field. Uh, uh, long and the short is, again, if you're out somewhere way out in, in the boonies, then that might be the reason why you're going to have to actually give this drug. Uh, but I, I can tell you at that point, you know, the prognosis, again, um, it, it's very... It, Break out your book on this one, definitely, if you're not too familiar with it. But you at least got to know what procainamide is and, and, the, and how to use it. All right, guys, we'll see you on the next one.